We are back, yes, after a six month break, we are opening up 2019 for the Slalom World Tour here in Marseille. One, 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 one shot, now the future is yours, go! Yeah, it's one heart, one shot, now the future is yours, go! Yeah, it's one heart, one shot, now the future is yours, go! My name is Nico Preen, I'm from Germany and I write for JP Australia and Neil Pride. So it's the first day of the PWA here in France and it's a reg registration day, meaning that everybody's coming here now and yeah, putting up their names and letting people know that they're here to compete. And we're putting in the serial numbers of the boards and registering our equipment because it's the first competition of the year. The PWA is a non-profit organization. It represents the best professional windsurfers in the world in slalom, wave, freestyle, now foil category. <laughs> slalom racing is a high-speed discipline in windsurfing. We race in uh, groups of eight around the downwind course. It's like the 100 meter sprint, so to speak, in, in track and field. It's set up to take advantage of the fastest equipment we have, actually. It's gear which is available for everyone. Um, and we limited the amount of gear we can use, so it's actually uh, doable for everyone. Okay, so uh, we just had the skippers meeting and we've just been advised of all the things that are going to happen now and the next days. For example, uh, we're right next to an airport and they told us to not go in that area um, where the planes are landing. Before you go on the water, please find those yellow sticks and make a mental note that you don't pass them. I just went on the water to see if the wind is enough and to test out my bigger sail. And yeah, it was really, really gusty. And the problem is that we need, uh, we need a certain amount of wind over the whole course. But it was good to go out and test the 9.4, um, the bigger sail, to see how it works. And I think it's all right, all good. Yeah, the, the way the game is on, I mean, uh, Wind Guru gave an offshore direction, which was 15 to 23 knots around this moment, I guess. Actually, so far we had onshore winds. Now we see some wind in the back coming. Uh, still a bit different direction, so it's, 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 you got to be prepared and, and, and see. Uh, because we don't really know. Maybe we are here for four more hours waiting and waiting. Or, or on the other hand, in half an hour it can be windy, we can get out there and have lots of action. So it's a situation where you have to be ready for everything. I'm uh, Jordi Funk, I'm from Holland and I'm uh, using Duotone Fanatic gear. I've, I've had a long, long winter um, to prepare for the season. Um, I've been to Bonaire first and afterwards it was time to get properly back to work, uh, which meant two and a half months of, of, of training, where we pushed out over 400 races, um, which is, is a lot. You have to simulate the race. And that's what we try in the, in, the, in the winter training. You get a boat and a few marks and, and just race. It is important that the guys are really on, a, on the same level, so it gets tight like in the World Cup. And other than that, you need to tune up your stuff. You need to have everything perfect because you can be damn sure that all the other guys will have their gear tuned. We're trying different boards, different fins, different masts, uh, different sails. So we really look into the details. And where did you go test? Like Garda? Uh, Garda here. On some places. On a full power testing? Uh, just testing. Just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Why On not? Tenerife, no. It's just practicing starts, jives. So if you're not, not fully comfortable on your stuff and, and your stuff doesn't run, you have no chance. Il y a des gens un petit peu que tu admires qui sont des, des modèles, tu serais capable d'aller leur demander un exodorat ou d'aller faire des selfies avec eux 
Sitting on the beach and, and waiting, you know, on those 15 minutes announcement is extremely stressful for for all the riders, you know. I mean, I, I get the side from the race committee that they don't want to waste any wind, and that's also in my interest. It gets a bit exhausting when it goes long hours, but I mean, when the conditions are on the edge, I can totally understand it, and I'm fine with it. So. So we've been uh, on the water for the whole afternoon, um, checking the conditions. The wind has basically been teasing us the whole day. Um, and now at five o'clock, the wind finally decided to completely drop. But there's a promising forecast for the next couple of days, and hopefully we get some serious sailing done then. I have to admit, I'm, I'm surprised about today. Right? When that gas came through, I thought... Now it's on, right? I've read, I've seen in France, it shut off like that. It's only when it comes through, it's, it's on. They were saying 10 to 20 knots, but that's a huge I think range. The, I think oh, yeah. the gas was bigger, man. It was bigger and those were lower, probably. Yeah. The wind was sometimes good enough, sometimes not. Shifty. Uh, gusty, so it was not really suitable for a World Cup, but tomorrow looks like it's it's really on, so it should be good. It's it's not a fun thing, you know, it's not uh, what we love from our sport, but we faced it before and um, it's, it's it's part of the game. We know sometimes it's, it's amazing, you can go sailing every day, there's action guaranteed, and we have some events like this, it's, it's sadly it is like that. So day two here in France, calm morning. There was supposed to be some wind already, but uh, it's not really windy yet. Looks looks weird from the wind. It has to turn a bit and then come strong. But we're supposed to have 20, 20 knots right now and have a look. So we'll see. But according to the forecast, it can really be anything today. So yeah, I'm gonna rig my sails all the way down to 7-0, just to be prepared for yeah, the wind to come. And I hope we'll, we'll get some races in today. Obviously, we need some changes in the wind, and unless the wind is uh, kicking in onshore, um, I'm not gonna go on the water with my crew until we have an offshore direction. So the course diagram on the board will be updated as soon as the wind kicks in. The forecast is looking pretty good and I think we're gonna get some racing done today. Good luck everybody and thank you. Day number two here in Marseille and the forecast wind, well, it hasn't really come in. It's still in the wrong direction. So the waiting game continues. <laughs> Delphine est appelée pour la Croix Rouge. Delphine est appelée pour la Croix Rouge. Tour entre 15 et 25 ans. Bon, on n'a bon, bon, pas le droit de le dire, on avait dit. Oui. Moi Man, on va, on va at some point, he's going to make the ball from below into the rim. Juste une question. So you lost it Yeah, ah, well. oui. <laughs> Follow through. Follow. You need the spirit fingers. Like. Boom! Duty. I'm Sebastian Kördel. I'm 28 years old, and I'm a World Cup rider on starboarding Astra. The whole the whole racing experience in slalom windsurfing is is very exciting. You race very close to seven other guys who are fully committed to doing their best in the World Cup. Going 60, 65 kilometers per hour. You can always go faster as a matter of yourself if you can hold it or not. Chasing a mark, uh, trying to hit the starting line at zero, 
Uh, it gives you so much adrenaline. It's, it's, it's an amazing, amazing feel. Ty is, Ty is coming for Dirk. Yeah, come in, Dirk. Yeah, the usual question. What's the next announcement? I think we just keep on going 15 and 15. On, I don't think it's suitable to race at the moment. So. Okay, copy. Thank you. The wind still hasn't kicked in yet. Actually, it's still the wrong direction even. It doesn't look so promising, uh, which is actually quite lucky for me right now because I feel a bit nauseous. It's taking some power off me right now, so kind of lucky a little bit, but I, obviously I still want to race. But yeah, it doesn't look like it just yet. Well, it's part of our racing. It's, it's part of our reality in windsurfing. It doesn't happen uh, so often anymore, but it's still part of it, you know? I mean, I come to the, to the events to race, and I never hope for the wind to, to die. I mean, we live off the show we take to the water, and if there's no wind, there's no show. Some people say that it's going to drop, and then come back. I will see what we get. Amazing. The forecast was amazing for yesterday. In an event like this, you know in a way that you need to focus much more on this one race, you know, and less on a, like an overall average many races, you know. You know that you need to hit it. So it's a different way of focus, but it's nevertheless it's 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 part of our competitions and you need to be ready, be ready also for this. So now the wind changed the direction and now it's coming strong like forecasted. So we hope to uh, get racing soon. But looks good, looks good. And the first event of the year, it's especially interesting to be part of. Everybody gets together after a whole winter of training and nobody really knows where they're at, uh, what are the speeds in, in relation to the others. That's the, the first time when everybody's on 100%, nobody's holding back. It's a really important event because you want to start good, having a good result in the back and then, you know, in, in worst case, rely on that result. Uh, it seems to increase a lot now. Hopefully we're going to race. Still don't feel so well with my stomach that's a bit upset, but I want to race, so let's do it. Day number two here in Marseille and it looks like we're finally going to see some action. Yes, the forecast wind has kicked in and everyone is about to hit the water. So when the race director announces that we're going to start in 15 minutes, I just, you know, get in the zone of preparing my gear and making sure I have everything ready in case I have to get back. I think the worst thing you can do is, uh, is kind of rush around, quickly rigging your stuff, uh, where's my this, where's my that. I, I think that doesn't uh, do a good uh, mental preparation for getting on the water. I just try to rely on everything I train for in the winter. I try to remember all the training races I've done so that everything comes together and then hopefully, you know, I'll nail the stars. It's a reaching start, but it's uh, incredibly tactical also. Getting it dialed down in the start, that you, that you hit the starting line at zero with, with full speed, is a very tricky situation. You really need to sharpen your focus. Everything needs to be on point. It's perhaps the most critical part of the race, actually, and uh, sometimes the race is won or lost right there. Looks like uh, it's nobody's over the line early, so powering down now. A fair few Neil Prides in this. Bear holds on the Hamburg sail off pre end Neil Pride again. Let's have a look coming into this first mark. Looks like it's safe to say it's going to be one of the Neil Pride riders. So before I went to my first seat, uh, I felt quite confident. Um, I was on the medium equipment, so on the smaller one compared to most of the other guys. I know I'm fast on that gear, uh, the wind was enough, everything felt good and yeah. Prien, Bearholtz, Martin Muller, but uh, Bearholtz obviously known more for his freestyle from Germany. Um, 
holding on with the big boys in this. Out in front though, Nico Prien. Anyone seen his vlogging? He's been doing a fair bit of vlogging recently. He's got a YouTube channel. There we go. Prien, Bear Holtz, Martin Muller. That's the top three. Was that the end already? Yeah, it must. No. I was going to say, we've just got a shot of someone sailing back in. But what has happened there? It's really hard. Uh, it's really hard to pinpoint it down to to one issue that. Nico Prien, what happened? Anyone spot that? I'm kind of looking out there, trying to wonder what's happened. He was leading, and then I had I kind of looked up, and there was a shot of him coming in. Maybe you guys were watching at home. 